morning from California. <laughs> we made it to the West Coast for our West Coast summer adventure. Y'all, we are staying in Los Angeles for five weeks and we are just loving it so far. We'll show y'all around, don't worry. But for now, we had to get out for our first big adventure. Coffee. Coffee. Breakfast. Eat coffee. Breakfast. Coffee. made our coffee we're gonna get breakfast ready that coffee will be needed last night's sleep was beautiful the stars are incredible out here but we both just woke up a lot you know first night out it's like dead quiet all you can hear is the river we are in Sequoia National Forest we are camping out here for a few days we're about to drive up to Sequoia National Park to see the big tall trees we cannot wait we rented this incredible Jeep camper and the plan is to do some hiking see the sequoias we have a big day today so I'm gonna get breakfast going and then we have to drive last night we got in a little bit later than we intended to so we just found the first camping spot we could find in the very southern part of Sequoia National Forest so we have a long drive up to where the action is so let's get going y'all are making us late let's go <laughs> National Park we finally made it inside the park the drive here was a lot longer than we anticipated from our camping spot this morning so the day has completely gotten away from us so instead of doing the giant forest loop which I highly recommend you can find it on all trails we are here at General Sherman we're gonna do the short little path down to that tree and check that out I think the Congress is over there as well but we just do not have any daylight left to do the full like several hour long loop but that's all right we got our first peek at the sequoias with the four guardsmen which you saw us drive by it's the side by side by side by side huge sequoias they were amazing we had to pull over and take pictures they're so impressive so i can't wait to see general sherman we'll give you more facts about him a little bit later but let's keep with the trend of giant plants we took you to the saguaros and now it's sequoias let's go A lot of the trees out here are sort of U.S. government themed, if you will. We have General Sherman, the Congress, the President, the Senate. You get the idea that this is General Sherman, the beefiest, the biggest, the juiciest, let's say. General Sherman is the largest by volume at 52,000 cubic feet and the largest by weight, but not the oldest or the tallest. I think it's called the Giant Forest. This area that we're in is about three square miles and it is just chock full of sequoias. The drive up here is amazing. It's a great little first intro to Sequoia National Park. These sequoia trees are humongous. It's hard to explain like how big they are and I am not sure if the camera's even gonna capture just how ginormous they are. They're incredible. If you're here, you gotta come see it. General Sherman is definitely the biggest <laughs> sequoia by far, but we're gonna go check out some more right now. Fun fact, most 
most trees, I guess in the US or in the world, live to be maybe around 300 years old. Sequoias live to be over 3,000 years old. It says that the largest sequoias in the park are 1,800 to 3,000 years old. And some estimates say 6,000 years old. That's wild. They have seen so much. We were looking at the cross section over there of the sequoias and it said that you could see 80 different times where it survived a fire and it left a scar in the, what are they called, the heart rings or whatever, we can tell the age. They are sturdy and fast growing and they get a lot of water here, so giant trees, that's what you get. That's wild. All right, you guys, we found home for the night. We just left Sequoia National Park. We're just outside on the north end in Sequoia National Forest. And this site gorgeous. is gorgeous. Yeah, it's so spacious. I feel like you could have a whole group camping out here. You could. I don't know if we've mentioned, but we're doing what's called dispersed camping, wild camping, most importantly, free camping. <laughs> we're using the iOverlander app and just finding a spot and this is yet another hit like it two is. wins in a row so this one's really cool there's a little waterfall out oh, there gorgeous it's golden hour the sunlight's hitting everything just right with the flowers and the plants it mm -hmm. is super cool speaking of golden hour though <laughs> that means we don't have a lot of light left so we have to make dinner on the menu tonight our burritos burritos tonight. I'll let you in on how we make burritos. We're vegetarian in case you didn't know. We also like to eat plant-based as often as possible. We just prefer to. So I made the taco meat ahead of time so we can use it tonight and tomorrow because we have this Dometic fridge. It stays like refrigerator cold in the car all the time so it was really easy to make things ahead. Last night we had pasta that I made ahead so tonight I'm just reheating the taco meat which is just tempeh that I cut up really really small and then saute with taco seasoning, onions, and this time I threw in some lentils so that we'd have extra, you know, protein and calories, honestly. So we're just gonna saute this until it's hot, fill up some burritos, grill them up on the pan, add some hot sauce and call it dinner. And that's how we eat when we camp as vegetarians. <laughs> bon appetit. Burrito. Thank you. Burritos, not bad, <laughs> huh? These are hefty. This is like Gorgeous. It's no Chipotle, but it'll do. Woo. Cheers. Cheers. Good night, y'all. We'll see you in the morning. Mmm. <laughs> mm hmm. Need some more hot sauce. We got it. Yeah. Mm. so good and warm. We needed it, y'all, because it was freezing last night. Like, it got so cold. I don't know if it was the extra elevation that we camped at last night, but with no heater and, you know, pretty light uh, bedding, it got chilly. Woke up, took a shower in the Jeep this morning. If you're wondering how we took a shower in the Jeep, we have wilderness wipes to thank. Anyway, we're gonna drink our coffee, we're gonna get breakfast, and then we're gonna show y'all the Jeep and give you a full tour of that and how it's all outfitted. And then we'll even show y'all around the campsite we're at because it is beautiful and that's why we camped in the freezing cold weather last night. My coffee is brought to us by Stumptown. <laughs> we're gonna give it a go. It's meant to be drank cold, but it is too cold to put cold inside of my body. So I warmed it up. It's horchata flavored. Isn't that fun? to our home on wheels the beautiful beast of a jeep that we have been using to cruise around sequoia national park we wanted to start the day with a little tour of our home in case you might be interested or if you just think tiny living and camping is fun so first and foremost 
This is a Jeep Wrangler Sahara edition, 4x4 in white, which fun fact, when I was in high school, was like my dream vehicle. You know when you're 16 and you're like, oh, when I'm 16 or when I can drive, I'm gonna have a Corvette. I thought I was going to have a white Jeep Wrangler Sahara with the tan top. Alas, I had a 1996 Ford Taurus, but you win some, you lose some. Today I get to drive this. Let's take a look around the backside, the kitchen, if you will. Let's pull it all out. We've got it all pulled out, and the most important piece of kit, I think, I think, is this Dometic refrigerator cooler. It's a fridge. It's a small fridge is what it is. It runs off the battery of the car and keeps things refrigerator cold. We've been able to prepare so many meals because everything's perfectly fresh, no ice needed. Second most important piece is our handy dandy Coleman little stovetop cooktop. Runs off just the regular camping propane. Really easy. You need some matches or a lighter. Good to go. Now let's do <clears throat> A little kitchen shimmy shake because I can't even turn around in here. This is our little sink which is almost out of water but if you give it a little pump you've got water. You can cook, you can do some dishes, don't drink it but you know you've got water. Isn't that amazing? Way back in there is where we have pots, pans, plates, cutlery, cutting board, coffee apparatus. Ooh, which speaking of, we picked up the Aeropress Travel and we've really liked it. It only makes one cup at a time, but it's really handy. It's got everything you need. It holds paper filters and it's just got all the stuff in you. It's kind of French press-esque. Jordan says it makes a great cup. We recommend. Let's move on to the most fun part of this whole setup. Upstairs, if you will. all the stargazing and magic happens if you will it's a little pop-up tent you know it lays flat when we're driving obviously and then you just unlatch it and it goes and there you have it a little home we brought our own bedding and it's been mildly comfortable I won't say this mattress is the best and I won't say it's the worst really the main thing are these views when you're up here and you have all the windows open these trees and listening to the creek go by it's just, it's romantic, you know? I just love it, it's gorgeous. We highly recommend. It fits two people really, really well, although it was very cold last night and I had to tell Jordan to <laughs> quit cuddling me so hard because he was pushing me out the side of the tent. But it fits two adults perfectly fine. I'm about 5'5", five five. Jordan is just at six foot and I think we both fit really cozy. Staying in this tent and this Jeep camper has been the most fun part of this whole trip. The trees are great. The hiking is so much fun, but the camping part is fun. It just brings out the kid, you know? Anyway, it's time to go and do a hike, speaking of, so let's go. Oh, and if you were wondering what the bathroom situation is, it's pee where you gotta pee, and when it's time to do your business, this is your friend. We've never used one before this trip, and it's for digging what's known as a cat hole. If you camp, you know what this is, and you're like, yeah, duh. But if you don't, it's a hoot and a half. I highly recommend REI's YouTube channel to learn how best to do it. But basically, you dig a big hole, you do your thing, you cover it back up, you pack out your toilet paper. I have been using, for number one, I've been using what's called a Kula cloth, which is essentially a reusable antimicrobial cloth for wiping. So anybody that squats to pee, you could look into that. It's a little bit low waste and it's worked really well. I know at first that seems weird, but I read that a lot of backpackers use bandanas or whatever if you're gonna be out for a while or you're trying to reduce your TP usage so you don't have to pack it all out. I've really liked it. Food for thought. Anyway, now that we've covered the poopy business, it's time for hiking, okay? <laughs> situations in life with every story that I heard of the burning bliss all right we made it here to the Tacopa Falls trail and we learned that it's about 1.7 miles one way so it's about 3.2 it's a there and back it's not a loop and so far it is beautiful with the nature 
Yeah, it starts in a pretty busy area, but there's lots of good parking. There's even like water fountains if you need that mm -hmm. before you go. It's right next to the lodgepole camping sites. But it's gorgeous and pretty quiet so far and we're really excited. This is kind of the main activity for the day. And then later on, we've got a couple of high points to hit, but this is the big thing. Let's do it. So it's like mid-May, shoulder season. It is not that busy here. I've been really surprised that we've been able to kind of wilderness camp out here with not a lot of other people around, but also the trails are not that busy either. There's a few people, not that many though. How do you think that rock got stuck in those trees? Oh, it definitely rolled down the mountain, right? I think so. Yeah, it's crazy sturdy tree to stop that rock <laughs> or maybe the rock was always there and it's been cut out mm, maybe the trees lifted it up <laughs> i don't think so could be how old do you think this is oh man you got to count the rings right yeah i don't want to count them one two three four five fifteen fifteen <laughs> miss me 75 was the guesstimate. <laughs> I guess it was growing slower as it aged, yeah? If the rings are bigger, then it was growing faster. That mm. makes sense. Cool. And that's my extent of my tree knowledge. Okay. I don't know. I almost tripped. Oh man, we've gotten our first like full view of the falls. We could hear it for a while. It was quite loud. I had no idea how big it is. It, it's coming from the top of the mountain. It's so beautiful. There's a decent amount of snow left in May. It is stunning. And the hike gets very interesting right here. About the time you can really see it. You have to like climb through rocks and stuff. What a great hike. Fun little surprise. This is cool looking. have a proper knife to cut it and it got smushed but it's picnic time we are gonna go picnic amongst the trees this is insane you guys you really feel like next to these giant sequoias like you are standing next to giants like it makes me feel like maybe I don't know the time when dinosaurs were here like you think dinosaurs should be walking next to all this it is incredible okay bon appetit yeah. Okay, now that I've had a few bites of lunch, I'm in a better mood to tell you what we're having for lunch. They got very smooshed, but they taste good. We're having pinwheels, tortilla roll-ups, whatever you want to call them. It's something I had a lot as a kid, and I just was like, that feels like camping food. You can kind of see a pinwheel shape. Swirly, swirly. <laughs> They're very good. And while we're here eating outdoors in a national forest, national park? Anyway. We should mention bears. They are all over the place, although we haven't seen one yet. And everywhere you go, every trash can has like a special lid and there's signs everywhere about active bear area. And it really is something you have to be aware of, especially with food. 
you either need to have a bear canister if you're tent camping, which is like a special thing to store your food in that they can't get into, or if you're car camping like we are, you can store it in your car, but it needs to be inside a container so that they can't see it or smell it. That's really important because basically what we've read is if a bear around here has human food, they tend to become more aggressive so that they can get that human food. And then if it goes on too long, they have to put them down and nobody wants that. I hate that that even happens, but I guess I understand. So make sure you're securing your stuff. Keep the bear safe, keep yourself safe. Just wanted to share that with you. Before we find our spot for the night, we're gonna just stop by two quick little attractions, if you will. We're gonna go see Tunnel Log and Hospital Rock. Yep. And maybe also Tunnel Rock. Maybe. If there's time. Okay, let's go. So yeah. I chose red beans and rice, and it's all just dehydrated. You're just rehydrating it. So I don't expect a ton. I have salt and pepper on standby. These are all pretty safe bets, I'll say. Like beans and rice, right? Quinoa and beans. All right. This is not bad. Really? It has flavor. Is it as good as like Look how thick my grandma's red beans and rice? No, it's not. But I'd eat it. It's not bad. I will say though, this one, the Mexican quinoa bowl, it has a little sweetness to it, and I mm. generally don't like like sweetness Can in any of my stuff, fajitas or anything, so. It does have an unexpected sweetness. Doesn't it? Oh, this has a smell. It's a really interesting pasta shape. How is it? It's okay. <laughs> it's like, like it's not bad. I would add some pepper maybe. Again, I wouldn't be mad if I had hiked all day or backpacking. Yeah, you can't be picky. You know what this tastes like? This mm. mac and cheese. Leftover mac that got a little dry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was fresh, it's not anymore. But hey, you're still gonna eat it. Red beans and rice, Mexican quinoa, three cheese, mac and cheese. Which one's your favorite? Probably this one mm. because it surprised me the most. It has good flavor. I'm, yep. I'm fine with it. I really thought this was going to be my favorite, but the sweetness, mm. it's a no-go for me. That's my favorite. I guess uh, Backpackers that Pantry more savory. knows what they're doing because mm -hmm. this was my second favorite. Yeah, that's so. my second too. Anyway, let's round out this video. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed coming to Sequoia National Park with us and doing a little camping. We sure learned a lot. We did. And had a big adventure and saw some big trees. So we'll see you in the Huge next one. Huge trees. Y'all, the spot that we picked was incredible. We got in so late last night that we couldn't really see all of the surroundings and the mountains and the beautiful trees and everything. It is incredible. If y'all want to start, ooh, there are big, big mosquitoes. Get you a mosquito repellent, okay? It was a fun night last night. Golden State Cider, mighty dry, mighty delicious. Check this out though. That's what the red beans and rice. Oh, is it not focusing? I'll put it back up there. Oh. You gotta do it like a beauty blogger. There you go. I watch a lot of beauty YouTube. I don't wanna connect. <laughs> 